So I'm going to unplug that. Okay. And then I'm going to show our program for the day. John Hardison. John Hardison has uh, been a friend of mine for a couple of years and I always enjoy what he has to say. Thank you, John. He does that. Wow. That <laughs> That's a nice. Sometimes. Well, today I want to work my way backwards a little bit and then maybe work my way forward. When you think about Thanksgiving, most of us in the pilgrims, most of us sort of picture something like this. But a lot has changed since the 1700s, hasn't it? So here's my question for you, and I want this to be participatory. What do you remember about last Thursday? What do you most remember just almost less than a week ago about Thanksgiving? Bring it. Good food. Good food. Impatience. 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 <laughs> okay. All right. I don't, I'm glad I wasn't where you were. <laughs> Family. That's what I remember. It was really easy. It was easy. That's good. Well, it sounds to me, except for Mr. Impatience over here, yeah, that y'all had, had a great Thanksgiving. Yeah, there was some love in there, but they weren't connected. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. Very good. Well, for most of us, there was a big meal. For most of us, there was probably a football game. For most of us, there was probably some games. Um, for some of us, maybe we just sat and listened to the old people talk, tell some old stories, which is kind of fun sometimes about the good old days. I remember when I was a kid, just thinking, I wonder how long that prayer is going to last before it Because, but I would say that where do you think the idea of having the prayer before the meal came. We sort of look at the pilgrims and we say, well, the pilgrims did, the, did that at Thanksgiving. But where I want to take you today is to where it really originated. And I would say this today, that the most important ingredient in, in, in Thanksgiving is the, probably the ingredient that you remember the least. I noticed when we went around the room, nobody said, I remembered the prayer, you know? And for some of us, maybe there wasn't even a prayer. Maybe we just filled the plate up and then we went and sat out and started shoveling it in. <clears throat> but what I want to do is bring us back to where did we get this idea? Why do we have to do this? Why can't we just go get the food? That's what I want. And so today, that's what I want to talk about. I want to talk about where it came from. Why we do that. And where you get that from is an old story not, not a fictitious story, but an old story about a man who fed 5,000 people with just a little bit of food. Way back in the Bible, way back in John chapter 6, it talks about Jesus feeding the 5,000. So when I ask you about that story about Jesus feeding the 5,000, usually what you remember is there were two fish and five loaves. And that's all you remember. And Jesus was on the other side of the Sea of Galilee in Tiberias, and he was in front of this mountain, and he looks around, and he sees this mass of people, and he kind of sits there for a second, and he looks over at Philip, and he says, Philip, where are we going to get enough money to feed all these people? And Philip looks around and says, I don't know where we're going to get enough money. We don't have enough money to feed all these people. And it says that Jesus already knew the answer to his question. That he was testing Philip. <clears throat> he already had the thing already figured out and, he, and this was a lesson that he wanted to teach everybody. And so then Andrew comes to him. Let's pull Andrew up here. Come on, Andrew. Andrew comes and says, here's what I got. I got five barley loaves and two fish, but that's not enough. Look, look, look at all these people. There's 5,000 men here and they got wives and kids. So there's even more than 5,000 people here. What are we going to do? And Jesus is just thinking to himself, perfect. This is exactly what I want. And here's what we forget. is the scripture says that before he distributed the food, he had them sit down and he gave thanks for the food. That's where we get the idea. That before the blessing of food from God, we need to be thankful for what he has provided. And he set the model. I mean, if anybody set the model, Jesus set the model that before you acknowledge that what we get from God is a blessing is that we are to be thankful for what God has given us. And so that's where that comes from. And it says that there were, after the meal, 
How many baskets left over? 12 yeah. baskets. Yeah. An amazing thing. And what I'm going to show you too is I'm going to show you, have you ever noticed that in the pattern of time that Thanksgiving always comes before the food or the blessing? So the pilgrims came up on the Mayflower and how many, how many died and how many lived when they came over? One person died on the boat and then they had gave birth to one person. So one person died and one person lived. And then when the pilgrims came over, they were here for the first year, and 50% of the pilgrims died. That's bad. That's not, a good, that's not a good number. But what did they do? They took time to pray for Thanksgiving before they ate the food of the first harvest. What does that tell us? That tells us that you don't just be thankful when things are going good, which we're real quick to say, oh well, man, thank you, Lord, love the new truck. The great house I got, all the stuff I got, all of that. What we learn from that is even when the times are tough, we've got to be thankful because God provides all things for all of us. There's a little exercise that I like to do at Thanksgiving. It's kind of fun. It takes a couple of minutes. Y'all can, can do it with me. I try to do it every year. And I just take the word Thanksgiving, and I take the first letter of each word, and I try to go down there and just jot down something that I'm thankful for that starts with that letter. So that's what we're going to do real quick. And we'll see how we compare. You be thinking as we go down these letters, you be thinking of something about that letter that you're thankful for. Okay, so let's take, for instance, the T. I'm thankful for turkey, for good stuff. Anything that you think of that starts with a T that you're thankful for? Today. T. Texas. T? Texas. Okay, yeah. Texas, there you go. I love it. That's right. That's right. Okay. What about H? H is next. Home. Home. Okay. Anything else? Health. Health. I thought about my wife this morning. You know what she likes? Heated seats. <laughs> Heated seats in the car. It's cold. Okay. I just put down ham. I <laughs> like ham. Turkey. Ham, I see, I see bacon. Here. <laughs> I mean, you come to Rudy's, you can't be a vegetarian here. You just can't. It doesn't work. Okay, what about apples? We'll go with apples, if you want. apples are good. I put down another day on earth. It's a good thing. I'm thankful for just another day. Another day of living. Okay? In. Somebody give me an in. That's a hard one, isn't it? Another slice of turkey. Another <laughs> slice of turkey. I like that. I like that. Get back to Texas again. Mashed potatoes. Mashed. Okay. Wow. We're I don't know that my age is any better, one. but all I could come up with was Nebraska furniture. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. It's a great place. It's a neat place. It's, that's all I got. But hey, what's what? It was closed on Thanksgiving. It was closed on Thanksgiving. Don't you always wonder about that? We're having this great Labor Day sale. We're just not going to open. You know? But come on. We got a Labor Day sale. Yeah. That's exactly right. Okay, what are we gonna what are we gonna do with K? Now don't say Kiwanis, I know that's oh I know that's the that's the go-to. But what what's another K? Ken. 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 Okay. What about kind people? There you go. There's Kiwanis. Kiwanis are kind of people. Okay. What kind of people? Yes. That's right. Alright, what about our S? What's our S gonna be? Surgeon. I'm sorry. Surgeon. Surgeon. Surgeon, yeah. Well, Surgeon's I'm good. Service. <laughs> service. Service. What, yeah. Ken, Ken would always say serving. Yeah. I put a savior. A savior for the world. G. I had to go. I had to go with the big one, right? What's another one? We're grateful. Great. You know? Goodness. Grace. Goodness. Excellent. No. Gold. <laughs> what about the I? What about the I? What can you think of that you're grateful for that starts with the I? IT? No, iced. Iced tea. Okay, IT is good if it works. Independence. Independence. Oh, that's good. Here's a word for you. Idiosyncrasies. That's what I was thinking. Did you know that? <laughs> can you spell it? That's the hard part. Did you know that that word, <laughs> that word right there is what distinguishes you from you, from you, from you, from you. I love idiosyncrasies because that's what makes us different. That's what makes us unique. It's our taste 
the things we like, the way we do things, the style in which we do them, that's, that's unique of us only. <coughs> okay, what's another, what's one for V? Victory. Victory, okay. What else? Are you thankful that you have a vote? Think about the countries where the people don't have a vote. They're just told what to do, they gotta do it, they have no say in the matter, and that's it. We have, we value our vote. What about I, another I? Independence. Sounds like a Texan. I like that. I put down imagination. We are the one creature that has an imagination. None of the others do. God's given us an imagination and it helps us. I know sometimes when you're in the monotony of doing some job that you gotta do, that's when it's imagination time. Because you're thinking, oh man, I'm about to have to paint this whole wall right here. And it's kind of boring, so I'm gonna think about some other things while I'm doing it. I'm gonna imagine some being in another place, maybe. So it's, it's ingenuity. Ingenuity, that would be an E, but in a, we got another N. We got another N. Give me one more N. Not in brassic furniture this time. New truck. New truck. We, I heard surgeons earlier. How about nurses? Yeah. Would anything get done if we didn't have nurses? No, no, no. The doctors would perform the surgery and they'd say, go home and get well. We got to have nurses to take care of them. And the last one is a G. <coughs> what do you think about? Think, of, think about giving people, people who are givers. Think about growing up and you think about some neighbors and some people that helped you out when they didn't have to. They were giving people, people who cared. So what I'm talking about today a little bit is the prayer of thanksgiving that comes before the blessing. Why do we have, I don't think it's a coincidence, but why do we have thanksgiving before we have Christmas? I think it's interesting that we have a time of thanksgiving and then the blessing of the Christ child comes after that. The Christ child who later claimed himself to be what? The bread of life. Hmm. So before the bread comes, the food, the, the material things, comes the thanksgiving. John 6.35 says, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never go hungry. And whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. So that's Thanksgiving. We're about to enter four weeks of a different shift. Now we get to shift on the blessing. And so what I would say is this next four weeks, it's all about the baby. That's really what it's all about. That's what Christmas is all about. It's all about the baby. Isaiah said it this way, 600 years before the baby came, for unto us a child is born, for unto us the government will rest on his shoulders, and his name will be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, Eternal Father, Prince of Peace. But what did, it, what did they think it would look like when the Messiah would come? There's a professor at Dallas Seminary, and he wrote a great article and he said that there was a major headline in England in 1948 in December. And it read this. It said, Prince Charles, who was the future king of England, was baptized in Buckingham Palace at the age of four weeks. Following the day of the first pictures of the royal baby and their heir apparent was released to the public. One of the popular pictures shows the royal family, including parents and grandparents, gathered around the little prince, gazing longingly at him. The caption underneath the pictures read, All Eyes on the Baby. A lot of people thought that when Jesus would come on earth, when the Messiah would come, that it would look like this. That it would be about royalty. That it would be about prestige. But God had a different plan. Instead of that, Isaiah tells us that his name will be Emmanuel. In Greek, literally it means with us God. In English, we say God with us. But his name will be Emmanuel. And he will not be a royal prince that comes in a royal uh, dress as Prince Charles did. But he'll be a baby born in a stable in the manger. The message of Christmas is all about the baby. The lengthy genealogies and their difficult to pronounce names are all about the baby. The Old Testament prophets peered down in the corridor of time and saw the baby by faith. Zechariah, father of John the Baptist, sang about the baby. The angel host announced the birth of the baby to the shepherds. The angel Gabriel made the rounds announcing the baby's coming. 
The shepherds traveled immediately to see the baby. Mary treasured and pondered everything about the baby. The only, the, I'm sorry, the old man Simeon and, and Anna in the synagogue recognized the baby as Messiah. And the wise men traveled hundreds of miles to see and worship this baby king. Think about that. They didn't just come to give gifts and say, oh, it's been nice to see you and meet you. They came to worship the baby. At Christmas, we sing lots of familiar Christmas carols. Joy to the world, the Lord is come, let earth receive our King. Or, uh, O come all ye faithful, joyful and triumphant. Or away in a manger, no crib for a bed. But I'm afraid that in this day and time, the world would say it differently. Rather than joy to the world, I think they would say joy to the world economy. Rather than, O come all ye faithful, the world sort of chants, uh, O come on, nobody's faithful anymore. Or away in a manger, I think the world is moving farther away from the manger than they are toward them. And so I want to say this. I know this about you, and I know this about me. I'm in one of three places today. I'm either moving toward the manger, or I'm moving away from the manger, or I'm not doing anything. I'm just sitting. I'm not going to, do, I'm not going to move closer or further. <clears throat> and that's probably the worst place you can be, because you're not going to do anything. So let me challenge you this Christmas season for the next four weeks. Snow globe your life. What does that mean? Take your life and turn it upside down. Do something different. Make a change this Christmas to move yourself closer to the manger. Whatever that means, do something different. Don't just sit and soak this Christmas. Many families have a tradition growing up and uh, a lot of families will sit around the tree maybe on Christmas Eve and they'll read the great famous poem Twas the Night Before. And so I'm going to leave you with this. This is my version of Twas the Night Before. Twas a few weeks before Christmas with breakfast in hand. Kiwanis met at Rudy's to hear this old man. I just turned 16. Awesome. Stockings being hung by the gas pumps with care. No formal address of St. Nick would surely be there. We read from the book that recorded man's fall of God's plan put in place to rescue us all. I'll send my son, Jesus, and he'll be the one who was born and then died when it was all said and done. And then he was raised to bring peace from our strife, but only to those who believe he is the way, the truth, and the life. So to Dasher and Dancer and Prancer and Vixen, Comet and Cupid, Donner and Blitzen, I say, give me Abraham and Isaac, Jacob and Joseph, Peter and John, and Paul, who we boast most of. Merry Christmas to all. Sleep soundly this night. For it's Jesus who reigns, not Santa, with great power and might. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, don't run off. Hold on. Oh, the end of the morning. I love it. This is, a, this is from us. On the back here are the clubs that we sponsor. Awesome. We have some of the key clubs here. Yes. Today. So, and these are the future leaders. They need to be hearing things. That's right. So usually we have a lot more. I got you. Uh, that's awesome. Thank you, Daniel. Appreciate it.